Hey, what's up, YouTube? I uh, thought I would do a quick painting video on some Relic Knights resins due to the RK 2.0 Kickstarter coming out, and I figured I would show you guys this since uh, some of you guys may not have worked with resins before. But you can see I'm doing a little cleanup here. Just pulled the uh, model off the sprue. This is the Viper model uh, from the RK 1.5 when they did switch to uh, resin kits. You can see I didn't uh, do any pinning. All I did was I used uh, some special T. Uh, CA glue which worked out just fine. You can actually uh, come back and fill gaps and that kind of thing. Not a big deal but you can see it's much less critical to pin these models than it is for uh, metal models. And you can see I'm just sticking it there to a base that I stamped uh, with a happy sabuku. Uh, I think this is a steel plate base. On to some priming. We're going to prime this with uh, Vallejo surface primer. This is a black PVA surface primer and then I'm going to do my zenithal prime you know this is uh, coming in with some gray primer to give us a little bit of lighting there and I'm going to prime the face while I'm at it and finally I'm going to give it a, a kind of a highlight off the prime again this is a zenithal priming technique uh, designed to allow us to get some shading and some highlighting done prior to painting now to spray a base coat we're going to spray uh, game color Vallejo game color uh, rosy flesh and I'm going to put that on the face as well. I'm then going to highlight uh, one time with um, Pale Flesh from uh, Reaper, actually, uh, and give it uh, some highlighting there. The idea here is I'm painting this model kind of like Kusanagi from um, uh, Ghost in the Shell. That's kind of the idea, but uh, just kind of a looser interpretation of that particular character. Okay, so on to the face. We're going to paint in some eyes. I'm starting with black gray to paint in the entire orbit. And, uh, you know, this is a normal uh, thing I do. The only difference here is with the plastic, I don't have to worry about drilling a hole and pinning and, uh, I'm sorry, with the resin, I should say. Uh, I am just painting it on the sprue with the intention of gluing it on much later. Now with the big anime eyes, that's also a feature of the RK 2.0 plastics, and you can see great definition on that face there. Um, even with the tiny little anime nose, you know, one of the criticisms of the plastic versions is there really wasn't much detail on the faces, but you can see here, this is a Viper. This is a just a basic minion model, and you can see it's got great detail on the face. I'm um, just painting it in and kind of feathering out a, a mistake there. But I'm going to go ahead and come back in and start painting in the details of this. Uh, doing a little more definition on the eyes. Uh, and then I'm going to actually start to paint in the model. Uh, starting with that uh, rosy skin. It's going to serve as my uh, sort of my undercoat for the model. And then we're going to mix that with youthful flesh. So because this is a Kusanagi who is, you know, kind of like a cyborg or a cybernetically enhanced model, the face is going to be, uh, I want the face to look very, very human. Um, but we're going to do some stuff to the kind of bodysuit to make it look like Kusanagi's bodysuit when we get to that. I'm going to finally uh, mixing up that uh, rosy skin with the youthful flesh and just bringing it all the way up towards youthful flesh and that's going to become my final highlight there. Also going to uh, paint in the lips with a mix of a little bit of scarlet red with my skin tone. Always mix the uh, red with the skin tone in order to get the, uh, the color that you're looking for there. Okay, so a couple more highlights just to get that going. We are almost done with the face. But as you can see, I just wanted to really kind of zoom in here to show you that uh, the with the RK uh, 2.0 resin models, the detailing is exquisite on the faces. So you're going to want to take good care of that kind of stuff. Also, uh, I forgot to mention when working with resins, you are going to want to wash the resins before you use it. That way you don't have any mold release or anything. This is much more critical on resins uh, and some of the other plastic kits uh, more so than you, you may run into with, say, hard plastic or metal. Uh, on to the body. Uh, right now I'm taking some uh, 
uh, game color heavy orange and I've, I've mixed that into a glaze and I'm kind of working that into the shadows of the model because I want to build some definition off of this faux skin here. Next I'm going to make a glaze using uh, P3 flesh wash, one of my favorite things, and mixing that into a glaze and then purposely running it into the lines, the kind of crevices, the, the detail on the bodysuit. Um, kind of using how thin it is, uh, the capillary action to draw it into exactly where I want. So you can see the crevices there uh, on the back of the model. And it's just helping divine, uh, define things. You can see me working it into the shadows there below the, below the breasts. Um, so this is a nice little technique uh, just that you can do to, to help uh, add some definition to your model after you've airbrushed it. And so once you're doing, once you're happy with the shading, now you're going to start working on the highlights. So now I'm coming back in with that rosy flesh uh, and youthful flesh mix, and I'm going to start highlighting back up to youthful flesh. Actually, in this case, uh, for the body, I didn't use youthful flesh. I'm sorry, I used that for the face. I actually used pale flesh um, as the ultimate highlight color. So I'm mixing in uh, that rosy, uh, rosy flesh with the uh, pale flesh and just working it up. Now I'm doing a little uh, basalt gray on the weapon and the steel plating. You can see I kind of stylized it because that's going to play a role later when I hit it with the wash. So right now here comes some uh, Vallejo black gray. That's going to be the other major color on this model. So you can see it's a very simple color scheme with Kusanagi here. In fact, I really would kind of loathe to do the um, the cloth details, all the belts and stuff, because, you know, I, I always think of that iconic Ghost in the Shell scene where Kusanagi basically just wearing the, the bodysuit. Actually, I think she's just nude. Um, and she uh, uh, she does the little swan dive uh, into the building. Uh, so here I'm doing the jacket. Again, this is with black gray. And I'm going to um, actually kind of cut around the shoulder armor plates in the backpack because I want that to be a purple color. Just going to give a little bit more interest than, uh, you know, the, the standard Kusanagi, which is more of like a white bodysuit and a black jacket. So again, loosely based on that idea. And I decided to paint the, uh, the shoes in because I don't know, that was bothering me. <laughs> don't really have a good explanation for that one other than I, I, I wanted some dark feet on this model. Uh, did not paint the knee pads in. I kind of wanted the knee pads to blend in with the faux skin. So here comes uh, some of the topmost highlight. Again, this is a glaze mix of um, Vallejo pale flesh and uh, glaze medium. And I'm just using that as the top highlight. Again, drawing that thin coat of painting, uh, that thin coat of paint up towards the, uh, the lighter parts of the model or where you would expect the light to fall if you had a forward uh, facing uh, light source that was above the model. And again, this is just gonna give the, uh, the contrast there between the top plates of the suit and the uh, basically the borders and detail. Okay, so you can see uh, I'm dragging that color uh, the light color up towards the light, where the light is going to hit the model. So the tops of the buttocks and the, the, the top or upper parts of the thighs, tops of the breasts, um, essentially your standard uh, highlighting pattern. Okay, so looking good so far. So now we're going to hit that uh, those plates like I was talking about, the shoulder plates in the back with uh, Vallejo Violet Ink, and that's really all I'm going to do there, because I just I, I don't want to do much other than just give it a tone and be happy with it. Uh, and then again, because it's a super thin glaze that I'm using with this um, pale flesh, I'm just going to keep coming back in with it. Uh, the glazes do take longer to dry, so that's why I just continue to paint other parts of the model and then come back to the glaze uh, when the previous uh, layer has dried. So you can see me working a little more glaze there until I'm going to be happy with it. Now uh, I'm going to take P3 Armor Wash, again one of my other favorite washes from P3, and I'm working that into the weaponry and the steel plating on the base. This is just a nice cool little shortcut that you can do if you uh, pre-paint everything a uh, specific grays, I think in this case basalt gray, 
Finally, I glue the uh, head back on and uh, we're painting the hair uh, that uh, heavy violet as the base tone and then we're going to come in with a highlight of blue violet. So purple hair, Kusanagi here, um, and uh, doing a little highlight of uh, kind of a neutral gray on the plate there to give it a kind of a, a dirty steel look with that uh, armor wash all done. So we're just about done with the model. We're going to go ahead and paint in uh, the highlight and then we're going to paint the lip. But that's going to do it for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, really hype about the Kickstarter. Go check it out. Relic Knights 2.0. Super get amped because the models look great and uh, have fun painting it, you guys. Thanks.